three more weeks and America will vote for the next president. We saw the first candidate debate. It was honestly a mess and the president also got infected with the coronavirus. Now there are hopes to restart talks for a stimulus package. This is VIG Trading Talk and I'm Manuel Koch. And joining me now are Salah Idine Boumidi, he's the head of markets at IG, and Peter Tuckman, the legendary Einstein of Wall Street, over 35 years on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Guys, so good to see you. And I am, I'm coming to you from Wall Street, right behind me, George Washington, where he was inaugurated behind me, the New York Stock Exchange. Welcome. Great to see you, Salah and Manuel. Thanks for having me. Peter, you got infected with the coronavirus uh, very early this year, and we still can see that you suffer. What do you think about how the president handled that situation? You know, I really think, you know, you know, I've been trying to convey the message for a while now, having experienced and lived the virus, that people have a misconception that if you're old, you die, and if you're young, you get better. And I've been trying to share the message. This is not the case that 7 million people have been infected. 210,000 have lost their lives. The collateral damage of those who have been infected like myself and who have different residual symptoms ongoing. And so all politics aside, you know, the fact is that the president has, whether we find this to be a truism or not, it appears the president has been infected, clearly by his own irresponsibility as having a super spreader event and been in denial about the importance of wearing a mask and the importance of social distancing. But what I find a bit disconcerting, all politics aside, is that it's so disrespectful for people like myself, for people who are like myself, who are suffering from long-term unknown residual uh, and collateral uh, symptoms that are life-threatening still, that are life-debilitating still. And Mr. Trump still has not shared his empathy for those who have lost their lives, shared his empathy for people who have continuous symptoms and still elevates himself above everyone else, that he presumes that we will all be able to get airlifted to Walter Reed Hospital and be given the super duper Regeneron cocktail and that everything will be bright and shiny. And while I am now suffering eight months of severe residual symptoms, he's telling the world not to be afraid of the virus and that he feels 20 years younger. It's irresponsible. It's antithetical. It's anti-empathetical. It's 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 very it's very disrespectful, and uh, it takes me to a level of anger that I don't like to be. And I try and share my empathy with all those who have lost a loved one, who go to home, go to home, go home every night, and go to bed at night having lost a mother and a father, a son, a daughter. Uh, lost a family member and was not able even to say goodbye. And our president stands at the top of the balcony, making it seem like this is no big deal. We shouldn't let it control our lives and all that. So it's absolutely inexcusable on every level, Manuel. Peter, and we are very happy to see you back on Wall Street and uh, that you get better. So um, yeah, still uh, all the best and uh, get better soon, Peter. Uh, it's good to see you smiling. Thank you so much. You know me. I'm not going to let him get me. But it's important that we acknowledge what's really going on. Peter, let's talk about the markets. Um, there are hopes for a new stimulus package. How important is that for the U.S. economy and maybe for the markets as well? So, you know, as we look at the market, you and I have been talking with Salah so wonderfully for almost a year now about what really, really moves the markets. 
you know, and we've seen interest rates in the Fed. We've seen China trade deals. We've seen problems with Canada and Mexico. What really, really moves the market? Earnings sometimes and whatnot. And obviously, the moves that we've seen from February to March and March to here. Right now, as we examine the markets, the market's really not focusing on whether we have a Biden or a Trump win. I really believe there's two factors affecting the market on a day-to-day -day basis. It's the, it's the uh, stimulus package and it's the state of the virus, the reopening and where the virus is on its, on its own. So for right now, I think it's really important that we do pass another stimulus package. I don't know some of the particulars, but it's clear that a lot of people who are furloughed are not getting their jobs back. I believe there are a lot of people who now have been out of work long enough that they are really having trouble putting food on the table. So for the majority of people who are not the rich and wealthy, who are not getting the Regeneron cocktail, who have lost family members, who have lost jobs, and who are suffering the devastation of a recession and a depression, I believe it's super important that we do get a stimulus package. And I hope it goes through. But once again, we've got this crazy partisan politics going through. And, you know, the other day the market was at a high anticipating a stimulus package. And Mr. Trump, you know, in the middle of the afternoon at 2.30, while the market's trading at record highs, decided to tweet that he's going to walk away from the deal and the market sold off 700 points. And then a few hours later, he changed his mind. So there are two preeminent problems, the stimulus and the virus. And this is an ever-changing story. Peter, indeed, we need a stimulus on the market. And uh, if we look actually, uh, general speaking, on election years since 1929, uh, we see that election years are actually good stock market years. According to my calculations that I uh, that I measured for the Dow Jones since 1929, uh, we achieve an average of 6.53 percent. Sorry, in election years, the current year-to-date yield for Dow Jones is currently at plus minus zero. Will we still achieve our average election year performance this year? So a stimulus package could drive that, right? A stimulus package will clearly drive the market higher. It's important for us to note that Mr. Trump has been running his campaign and his presidency on a strong Dow Jones, not necessarily a strong economy. And nobody could have predicted that we would now, as in the last year of his presidency, be in this incredibly devastating state of a health crisis and yet a financial crisis and a deep, deep global economic recession, right? Whether we're going to be able to get a stimulus package in the next three weeks and it's going to take us up six and a half percent, I'm not clear, okay? It's hard to know what will be the preemptive catalyst in the market going higher or lower over the next three weeks. I believe Mr. Trump is going to do everything in his power to get the market to rise as much as he can coming into election day. I would imagine he's sitting there trying to figure out, can we get it up six and a half percent? On November 3rd, can we peak this market out at record highs? I think that's his goal. You know, it is a challenge. Um, the stimulus will be part of it. How the, how the you know, look, we're, we're seeing spikes in COVID all over the world, right? I don't think that's going to change. So right now, I believe the preemptive move to get the market in any kind of positive territory is the most robust stimulus we can get asked for. And that's really a matter of Ms. Pelosi, Mr. Schumer, the president, Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham. And those are some wild cards if I've ever seen them. Fact is definitely in this volatile environment, 6% is almost nothing. We have seen 
and this is for me from a technical perspective something which is clear the winner of this year are the technicals and not the fundamentals sorry for that because since the outbreak of the corona crisis tests of important moving averages on a daily chart like the 21 like the 55 or the 100 moving average that i use were used actually as buying signals, which actually underlines this intact upward trend. And for example, the last ta test of the 100 moving average on 24 September pushed the S&P higher. And now we are 6% higher than, than 24 September. Right. You know what? Look, we know the market is not going up on fundamentals because there's not enough information to really understand the guidance and earnings going forward. Technical analysis, though, defies all of that, especially in deep volatile markets. We are we are breaking. We have seen now since March barely a day where there's not at least a one percent move in the Dow Jones and or the S and P. That being said, we are hitting extraordinary technical levels: oversold, overbought, breakthrough, double moving averages, all of those things. So the market and the, uh, the tweets and Mr. Trump's irresponsibility, irresponsible interaction into the marketplace, which I believe is tantamount to man market manipulation, is, is way overpowering. Yet, if you stay firm to your technical analysis, there is money to be made in this market. We know it. We talk about it all the time because at the end of the day, markets are so powerful. The technical analysis is so powerful in a market like this, and it's been tossed around. So I stick with the technical analysis. We're going to see, you know, what, how that works out over the next three weeks. I'm not clear yet, uh, Stala. But I'm 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 with you. So we're going to see us anyway, and uh, and be in contact. We're going to talk about this uh, topic, of course. Yes, we are. Peter, I just read today that Broadway will be closed until the end of May at least. Also here in Germany, we see stricter rules at the moment. How's the situation in New York at the moment? So you know that I had my surgery on August 12th. I've been in recovery now for eight weeks. I have a few months more. I've been back and forth to New York ever since I was uh, let out of quarantine in June. And it's fascinating to see this city in the state that it's in. Obviously, if we look at the city in March and uh, uh, April, May, June, it really was the sound of sirens, the sounds of, of silence and really basically empty streets. As the city is slowly reopening, You're getting a sense of life. I arrived in New York two days ago for to do the interview with you guys. I wanted to give you a little bit of a beautiful view of Wall Street and the life we love here. Um, the city is slowly coming back to life. I believe we are seeing some spikes in different uh, zip codes here in the Brooklyn area and the Queens area. In the city, I'm not sure. You do see a few more restaurants open than before. You do see some outdoor dining that we have not seen. So I would say since March, April, this is the most robust that we've seen the city. You can actually walk by a Starbucks, stand outside, order a coffee. So, you know, in the world of reality, you know, if you can get a Starbucks, the world's starting to open up again. But I'm fearful that that as we're seeing spikes throughout Europe and in the United States for sure. You know, we know what a super spreader is. We saw one at the Rose Garden the other day. We know how contagious this disease is. So as I do, I beg people to be vigilant about social distancing. I took my mask off to do the interview. There's nobody within except George Washington, who's been dead for a while, so he can't get COVID. There's nobody anywhere around me, but I think it's important to note that the city is still apprehensive about really opening up. You notice a few kids, school kids uh, with their parents wearing masks, a few little coffee shops opening up and a few restaurants. But net net, the city feels a little bit better.
but it's still far from the, the city that we love so much. Peter Tuckman, the Einstein of Wall Street, and Salah Idin Boumidi, head of markets at IG. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you thank so you. much. We all look forward to meeting again soon. We've got three weeks until the election. The three of us and many others will be talking about the election and how this market will trade. I wish to see you guys soon. Have a happy day. Looking forward to that, Peter, and uh, yeah, appreciate your time. And guys, thank you for watching. This was the IG Trading Talk. For more information, check IG.com. Thank you for today. I'm Manuel Koch.